What's up guys, Grace here, welcome to our fifth video and in this video we are going to go ahead and add cloud function to send out emails when we have new documents written here. So what we are going to do is basically look out for when documents are written and then we are going to like pick out the email and then pick out the feedback then send the feedback to the email of the user who submits that. So basically this can be for reference purposes in the future but Honestly, I just want to show you guys how to build this kind of feature. So without wasting more time, we are going to use the Firebase tools. So the Firebase CLI, okay. So the Firebase tools basically will give us access to the Firebase CLI. So just get that. Then if you're on Linux or Mac, run sudo npm install that. You're going to need to have your password added then it's going to install so from there once that's done then you're go we are going to have access to the firebase cli and so once that is done then you can run you can run firebase login actually login to firebase on your machine then it's going to tell you that it wants to login then let it go okay then it's going to say that it wants to access your google account so yes then it's going to tell you everything was successful so if you come back to our app it can we can see that now we are logged in so what we need to do is do firebase init so doing firebase init basically will they will just give us an option options for what we would want to do so choose functions click the backspace and then click enter then they'll tell you to either choose an existing project or create a new one we want an existing because we already have done some some things on there then basically now yeah so the project is here called project you guys remember the name so choose that that's the only one we have and then it's going to go ahead and ask us if you want to use javascript or typescript i'm going to use javascript but feel free to use typescript then eslint okay that's okay we don't like bugs too then it's going to go ahead and tell us if, if we would want to install npm then just say yes install dependencies with npm just say yes on that then it's going to go ahead and install those for us so what that does is create for us a firebase json file then a firebase rc file which are, which are like basically configuration files for firebase we never have to touch them then they create us they create for us a fire a functions project with its own package json file so we want to now start cd into the functions file function directory and that's where we are going to work for the most part one of the things you are going to need to first do is install some of the things we need so you're going to need node mailer to send emails then we are going to need dot env to actually manage our environment variables that are secret for example, for example, guys, I would not want to share my email send address and password to you guys, although I trust you guys, but this is very confidential information. And just see, it adds this. If we check our package of JSON file, then they are right here. It also installs Firebase admin. So let's go ahead and get started writing our function. One of the things we need to do is, is just import the admin. So import admin so const admin equals require so this is common js so require firebase admin yeah this is firebase admin okay so to set up a functions app you just need to do admin dot initialize app so just like that that's all we need to do so now let's talk about how to use the .m file so while you're sending emails you are going to need to have to provide sender address at least we are going to be using gmail today so we're going to provide a sender address and then a sender email this kind of looks at this kind this sender email and then a sender password then these are these kind of these the information that google uses to authenticate who is sending the email so what you're going to need to do is kind of provide this. So I'm going to create in the functions folder, I'm going to create a file called .env. 
and this is going to contain the information that this is going to contain basically the information that will be used to send emails. But for you guys, I'm going to create a .env sample file. .env. Actually, I'm just going to .env underscore sample. So in here, we are going to write details of what we will send. So one of the things we are going to send will be, okay, we are going to need will be the sender email. Okay. So the sender email is just one of them. Then we are going to also need, okay, sender email equals, so here you will put your email. Then, okay, sender password also. So here you put your password. So when you're writing this file in the .env, please make sure you don't you don't leave a space anywhere. Okay, so for me, I'm just going to copy this and then have it here, and then I can change this accordingly. So, hmm, from there, let's just go ahead and kind of build out our function so one of the other things we need to do is kind is also set up set up uh, .env so installing it is not like all you need to do you just need to require it in your file so require require it's called .env and then you call a method called config on it config a function so this is all you need to do and uh, now we are ready to write our function so first things first, let's first see how we can pick the details we added in the env.env file. So we very well know that we added the sender email. So we need the sender email, then the sender password. Let's see, have it there. Then it's going to equal to process. I want to use the Node.js super global process one to access the environment variables so like that so that will do for getting for us those two now let's write our function so to write the functions do ex exports dot then you name your function I'm going to call it send email notification notification then okay that's the typo so then it's going to kind of oh so send email notification will equal to a function. Then now function ships very well with all the various products. So now we can connect with Firestore and then we write a document trigger on Firestore. So dot document. And then we want to always look out for when new documents are written. But the question you are going to target will be submission. Submissions. And then we put the world card for any document. I'm just going to call it doc. But this can be anything, anything that gets written. Whatever the ID is, then we can be able to get everything we need to get. So the trigger we're going to write is the one for on create. And basically, this will always be called when a new item is created. Then what happens is on create gives us the data. Okay, the snapshot of everything that has happened and then this comes with the data and then the context. The context basically is like all the other information that we might need, which basically would include something like who wrote to the database or where they were located or not, all that kind of stuff. So in here, now to get the data, we get the data from the snap. So const data equals snap dot data. So just do data, just like that, terminate it. Okay, so now we need to set up our node mailer. So, so I'm just going to do auth. <laughs> so auth, auth data, just going to auth data. Then we set it to node mailer, which we have not imported. Let's see, const node mailer, was it required? Let's call it node mailer. Okay. So okay. So node mailer. Then you put a method called create transport. Create transport. I wonder why they had to name it this one. So create transport takes in an object, and basically what it takes in is the 
basically the configuration and the details that it needs. So one of the first things we do is the host. So we are we are going to need to use the email SMTP for Gmail. So smtp.gmail.com, that's the one we want. Then we also set up a port where we are going to send emails from. Basically, since we are going to be using TLS, then we are going to set up 465. Okay, so also we are need, we are going to need to, spe to specify the secure property on it. Then we want it to be secure. Fine. If you have this to be false, then sad, probably you have to change your port. But let's just move on. Then we need to specify our auth object. So in the auth object, this is where we specify our details from the environment. So the user will be the email. Then this is standard syntax. So guys, don't feel like changing auth or secure or user. That's how it's supposed to be. So then the next thing we pass in is pass. So the next thing we pass in is pass. Sounds cool, right? <laughs> so, so I believe that's all we need to do. And now we just need to send the email. So now just go outside, outside this, but inside the on create trigger. Now we need to just use the same auth data. Okay, so auth data. Now this is what we use to send the email. So send email. Send, actually, it's called send mail. Okay, let's not get weird errors here. So in the send mail function, we basically pass in some other options. The from email can be anything. Maybe it was going to be info dot truly. Let's make that up. Dot com. Fine. The next thing we pass in is where we want to send the email. So I want to send the email. I'm just going to use these template retrievers because we want to add in some dynamic information. So what we need is what we need is the user's email, basically which comes in from the data as it's written, which you can access from data. So I'm just going to use this and sign. So data dot email. That's where I want to send the email. Then we are going to define an email subject. Then the email subject here we can hard code it. So small it as single quotes. You are you are submission info. Okay, just like that. Then we need to specify the text version. It's basically, is like the message, which we can now just use the feedback. That they added as this so next thing we need to do we can also specify the HTML version of the email which can literally be the same but you can always have this to fit your needs so now we need to call then so when everything goes correctly let's just log in our firebase functions console not our browser console but in our firebase functions console Let's just do successfully sent that mail. Then if everything, if something goes wrong, basically we can do. So what what we are doing here is just you can do dot catch. Sorry about that. So dot catch. Maybe this case an error. We just want to also log it. So console.log that error. So I believe that's going to be it for the for the function. Now what we need to do is do Firebase deploy. So if we examine things properly, we can see that functions is not being used properly. So just change that. And hopefully we don't have any more errors because it's like uh, that we do. So let's publish. If we are able to publish, then we'll be fine. So now we need to run Firebase deploy. So what that will do is it will basically build out our code and then 
try to deploy it to GCP. So let's see how that goes. So once that is done, we are just going to get the uh, deployment URL project console. Then it's going to tell us that successful create operation for the function. If we click on the console link, so this should take us to our Firebase console, which we can just switch ourselves to the functions. So we can see that our app, our function is live. We can see that it is looking out for a creation here. Let's make sure that's the, the Firestore collection name we have. So it is very important they be similar. So yeah, looks like they are. So if you go ahead and let's, let's do another submission. Our server is still running. So if we do, let's do cry across. So let's submit for Android. I'm just going to get the same links. Our screenshots are there, GitHub is there, everything else is there. Then submit tells us everything has been have been submitted. If we look at our if we look at our functions, then we should be able to kind of view logs. So in the log we can see that an email was successfully sent. Then don't mind this unless you really want to pay Google at this moment, but they tell us that an email has been successfully sent. Let me check out my email and see. So gmail.com. Okay, this is the email I want. I don't want to kind of expose my mails. So this is the one. So basically we get the email. Oh well, yeah, so it's this time. It's my local time. So yeah, I guess it all worked fine for us guys. Now, in the next video, we are going to push this to GitHub and then deploy it to Netlify. It's really cool how we are able to hide out environment variables, environment variables using the .env module. So thanks for watching guys. Please like and subscribe for new videos because I'm going to be doing this for so long. So. Maybe there will be something else to learn. So like and subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. I will see you in the next one.